through some cool science activities, and it's all been part of the Art of Reading Wonder Week, sponsored by Union Pacific. So for today, in honor of Union Pacific Railroad, we are going to be reading this wonderful book, Freight Train by Donald Cruz, and then we are going to do an art activity. Now we're not going to get started just yet. What I want to let you all know is what materials we are going to need in order to do the art activity, just in case you happen to have these close by and you want to do the activity along with me at home. If you don't have these materials really handy, that's okay. You can still watch the whole activity and then at the end you can be like, I know what to do and you can work on this a little bit later. But what I'm going to be using today for the art portion of this broadcast, I'm going to have some paper. And this is actually two pieces of paper that I taped side by side. And I'm actually using a little bit thicker paper. I'm using cardstock. But you can use regular paper, totally fine. I have kind of paint. So I'm not using watercolor paint. I'm actually using tempera paint. And I'm going to go ahead and start getting some of this ready right now. It's a little messy, but that's okay. And the colors that I'm using, and you'll see why when we read our book, but I'm actually using these rainbow colors of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And then I also need some black paint for this as well. I think that's probably enough for now. I'll get my last two ready later. And then you'll also, if you're gonna do this activity with me at home, you'll need a sponge. And this is one that you wanna use with permission from an adult because after you use the sponge for this activity, you're probably not gonna clean with it because you know it's gonna have paint on it. So find a sponge that you don't need to use for cleaning purposes anymore. That'll work out really well for our art. And then finally, you need a black marker. So those are the materials. If you want to go get them right now and come back, we're going to start reading our story in maybe about two minutes. But you can get your paint in as many different rainbow colors as you have. You can get your paper if you have two pieces and can tape them together side by side. Awesome. Black marker and a sponge. All right. So now I'm going to walk us over because we are reading a story about a train and we are doing an art project that shows a train. It only seems fitting that we hang out over at our iconic train that we have here in the lobby. <gasps> ah, isn't it beautiful? I love this thing. I know kids love to uh, check out this train when they come into the museum before heading out to the rest of the exhibits to explore. And we are really excited to read you this particular story today because Donald Cruz, his dad, actually worked on trains when he was younger. It's one of the things that sort of inspired this. Now I want to give us just another minute before before we start reading our story, in case I do have friends still joining us, or in case we have anybody who's looking around for their art materials. Again, that's our paper, our paint, our sponge, and our black marker before we get to that part of this broadcast. So, y'all doing well? It's Friday. Oh, Friday! I hear there's a song about it, but I'm not gonna sing it. You don't want to hear that. But yeah, it's Friday. If you guys are excited that it's Friday, give us a little thumbs up in the comments. If you uh, if you have something really fun that you're planning to do this weekend, maybe give us a little heart to let us know that you are excited about something cool that you get to do. So yeah, I personally. I'm very excited that it's Friday, but I'm also waiting to share this with all of you. I've been waiting for it all week long. All right, my friends, I think we are about ready to start our story. Now, this story is pretty short, um, and Donald Cruz illustrated this story, and I want you to especially pay close attention to the pictures because do our art project, whether you're doing it with me or whether you try to do this a little bit later, this is where we're taking our inspiration from, Donald Cruz's artwork itself. And our story, Freight Train, by Donald Cruz, is read with permission of its publisher, HarperCollins. Here we go. A train runs across this track. 
pretty simple beginning. Okay. Red caboose at the back. Orange tank. Yellow hopper car. Anybody have a guess as to what the next color is going to be? Give me a little thumbs up in the comments if you think you know what's coming. Red, orange, yellow. Green cattle car. Give yourself a little if you were like, well, I knew it was going to be green. Blue gondola car. Purple box car. Black tanker. And a black steam. Let's look at them all together. <gasps> Freight train. Look at this art. It looks so cool. I love the smoke coming out the top, all of the different shading that he did to make this work. It looks super cool. To this picture a little bit later. This is what we're going to recreate using our sponge painted train materials. Check it out. Just one word on this page. Moving. Look at this. As it goes faster, all of the colors blur together. So we get a little color mixing in here. See when we get yellow and green mixing together, we get that nice kind of light green color, yellowy green. Going through tunnels. You can just see the hint of the train. And then the rest of it coming out. We've got all these mountains in the back. Very cool. I'm turning a page. <laughs> Going by cities. All of these different shapes of all of the different buildings in the background. Crossing trestles. Really good word. Our bridge has all of these supports coming down from it because it's going across a deep area. So we want to make sure it's supported all the way across. Moving in darkness, moving in daylight. Look at the color contrast between the, the different cars of the train when it's got the dark background versus when it's got the light background. And check out how he made the steam look different too. Going, going, gone. So cool. Y'all, that's a short book, but I absolutely love reading it. I think it is so beautiful. I think Donald Cruz did a great job. This is actually one that he got nominated for a Keldicott honor, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and he has actually done a ton of books, and a lot of his books actually feature um, rather than having people, a lot of his stories don't have any people at all. Like this one, a freight train doesn't usually carry people. That's a passenger train. This is carrying stuff from one place to another. And so he actually had this whole book without any characters in it. The story kind of spoke for itself just with his illustrations and minimal, just not a whole lot of words. I think it's really cool. So he's got books about trucks and a school bus and planes and all sorts of things. Check out more of his work. He's really, really amazing. Right. So it. Oh, first of all, if you liked that book, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you've read a different Donald Cruz book besides this one, uh, maybe you can uh, you can do the little laugh emoji to be like, ha ha. I know his books, just like that. <laughs> all right, folks. What we are going to do is we're going to move on to that art project. If I have friends who are just joining me at home, I'll remind of what we actually need, but I've got all my materials ready to go right over here in our lobby for Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center. Now I'm going to keep my book on the table. I'm going to try not to get any paint on it because we are going to take this illustration, this page in the middle, and we're basically going to recreate this on our long piece of paper using our sponges and our paint. So just a quick reminder, or for those who might be joining, the materials that we need is to do our sponge painted train. We're going to need ideally two pieces of paper taped 
together because the train is pretty long, so we want to make sure we have room for all of the different cars that Donald Cruz wrote and illustrated in the book. We want to have as many different rainbow paint colors as we can. The book had red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, so if you have all of those different paint colors, awesome. If not, you can sub out some different colors. And then we need black as well for our engine at the front, as well as for the uh, wheels on the train. And then we want a marker, a black marker is good so that we can connect the different cars of the train. And finally, you'll need a sponge. Now, I have a whole bunch of sponges because I didn't think you guys would want to watch me being like, hang on, I gotta run wash this. And then I come back and I'm like, one more move, and I gotta go wash it again. So if that's something that you are doing at home, if you need to wash it off in between, awesome, but I wanted to have as many different sponges as I could just so I could show you the whole art project in a shorter period of time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go in the same order that Donald Cruz wrote and illustrated in his book. So we're going to start with red over here, and that's the back of our train, and we're going to work our way up to that black engine at the front. All right, so... I am using tempera paint. This is washable paint here. If you are not using, if you're using like acrylic paint or something, maybe cover up your shirt first or, you know, make sure that you're wearing something that if you get a little paint on it, it's okay. Also for my sponge, I went ahead and got this wet first and then I wrung it out really, really well. So I can squeeze the water's gonna drip out of this. It's not like sopping. But if I don't get it wet first, the sponge is really stiff and that makes it a lot harder to press the paint onto the paper. So it's a good idea to get it wet first and then squeeze it out so that it's just a little bit damp. All right, step one, I'm gonna move some of my uh, paints around here. I've already got a little bit of paint on my tray and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first sponge Sop up some paint and make sure the whole thing is covered. If I have a little bit too much, I can kind of get that off to the side here. And I do have some paper towels as well because I know I'm gonna get paint on my hands while I do this. I wanna try not to get too many thumbprints on the paper, but if I get a few, it's gonna be okay. All right, and I'm gonna start way in the back here. I'm gonna take my first one, set it down, and you don't have to like squish it or, you know, pound on it or anything like that, but we are just gonna press it down gently, especially in those corners so that we get that paint all over the paper and then when you lift it up we're just going to lift gently and i have one car super easy let's move on to the next one all right what do we get after red we have orange yeah of course you know that all right, so I've got my orange. If you are following along with me and you are using just one sponge and you want to go wash the sponge and come back, cool. But if you use the same sponge, like if I go ahead and dip this into the orange right now, I'm going to get a little color mixing. And you know what? That's okay. That can be kind of cool too. Just like when our train was moving really, really fast, the colors started to kind of blur and blend together. So don't be afraid to let your colors blend together a little bit. I bet it'll look really cool. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and take my next sponge, the one I have not used yet but I did get it wet. I squeezed out the water. I'm gonna get some of my extra paint off because I do like seeing the texture when it's on the paper. If I get too much paint, I lose out on this cool spongy texture and I think that looks pretty sweet. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy pretty close to my first car and just sort of pat that down, make sure I get down all of the corners and then lift it straight up. Let's keep going. Gotta reach for it, it's way down here. All right, and get some yellow paint. Get the extra paint off, and I'm using these cool paint trays. If you are putting your paint directly on your sponge, you don't have to worry about getting extra paint off, that's okay. You can also sometimes use things like just paper towels or something that it's okay, you don't have to necessarily, like I'll have to wash all of these afterwards. If you have paper towels and wanna use those, Cool, great option. All right, let's get my yellow in here. Pat, pat, pat. I feel like I need like a, a song or something while I pat this down. I think Henry laughed at me, that's fair. We don't need the song. All right, here we go, let's lift it back up. Just as I suspected, 
it's a yellow rectangle. See, we got a pattern going here, both the color pattern and our shape pattern. All right, let's move on to our green. This is actually my favorite color. Do you all have, at home have a favorite color? If you've got painty fingers right now, go ahead and keep working on your art. If you are watching to remember how you can do this a little bit later, go ahead and give me a little thumbs up down in the comments if you have a favorite color. And if you want, you can even write into the comments. Tell me what your favorite color is. Personally, I like green. I think green is beautiful. It reminds me of springtime. Don't get me wrong, I'm very excited that it's starting to get a little colder outside. But oh, look how pretty. All right. Now, next one. I got some of my paints. Oh no, don't get paint on this beautiful book. There we go. I'm going to get my blue paint ready. I just need a little bit. And I might as well get my purple paint ready to go as well. And again, you don't need a lot. I'm going to have a little paint left over. So if I want, I could make like four more freight cars after this one. I would just need to get some more paper. That'd be okay. All right, let's get some blue paint. Uh-oh, see, there's a song anyway. All right, blue paint. Next spot. I'm having it uh, round the corner a little bit. This one's going straight across, but I thought mine would be going over a little hill. Nothing too big. This train can handle it. It's tough. All right, and lift that straight up. Cool. I like the little uh, kind of... Uh, gradient difference here. There's my art word there. It's a little um, uh, thicker at one spot and a little bit thinner at the other. I didn't quite do that on purpose, so I can't take total credit. These sponges have a mind of their own. All right. And my purple one is going to go next. And we are so close to our engine of our train. There's my purple car. <gasps> Guess what? There's a train going past right now. I'm guessing you guys can't hear it at home, but we can hear it here in the museum. I always love when the trains go by. Sometimes if I'm like driving home, I'm like, oh, I guess I'll wait for the train. But when I'm here and I get to hear the trains go by, especially when they do the doot doot, oh, so much fun. All right, so I'll keep going. I have my last sponges for my black paint. And I got a little bit more paint for this one because I'm actually going to use black for my wheels as well. So I feel like this is where I'm going to get a little paint on my fingers. No big deal. But this one I'm actually going to use twice. All right, so I've got some black on here. I'm going to start the same way I have with everybody else and just get it right up next to my purple one. Pat, pat, pat. But now we want to be able to tell that this is the front of the train. Otherwise, we can't tell which direction this train is going. So we're going to add a little piece to our train. This is the spot where the conductor gets to hang out. Can't quite make him a window unless we cut a hole in our sponge, which maybe you could do if you wanted to, as long as you have permission to cut the hole in the sponge. Be careful. Um, but this way, we can tell the front of the train because this is where our conductor gets to sit, pull on that, uh, I don't know what it's called, horn? It's like, yeah, it's like the train whistle, but it's, it seems a lot louder than just like, oh, kind of whistle, so. <laughs> All right, so not too much pain on my hands, that's okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we are going to add our wheels. Now, I happen to have this cool little sponge dabber looking thing. I would suspect that many of my friends at home do not have a little sponge dabber type of thing. So I'm gonna show you two options. If you do have a sponge dabber type of thing, we're just gonna take that, get a little bit of paint on it, just like we have with all of our other sponges. And we'll start in the back with our red car. And I'm just gonna, if you look at this picture, there's more wheels, but I don't quite have room for that. So I'm just gonna do two wheels, or at least two wheels that we can actually see. And I'm just going to dab that a couple of times until that wheel shows up. Get a little bit more paint on my sponge and do another one right next to it. So that's one option. Now, if you do not have a little circular, a little round sponge at home, you might be able to find something else you could use, a paintbrush, something like the bottom of a marker, like a Crayola marker. It has a flat round circle. You could use that as just kind of a stamp. Or if you want, you can just use your finger 
So get a little bit of paint on your finger and make your own little wheels just like that. Just as cool. I'm going to keep going with my sponge here because I think I can do this kind of quickly because we know what these wheels are going to look like. And keep going. Oh, I'm getting a little color mixing. That's, that's kind of cool. I got a uh, dark yellow. And I got some wheels here. And of course, the grand finale of wheels right on our engine at the front. All right, last thing we need to do to finish our art is we need to connect our cars. And that's where your marker comes in. Because otherwise, this guy's pulling everybody along, but they're all just gonna kind of, eventually they're gonna lose some momentum and they're just gonna be sitting on the rails being like, help, come back and get us. We, we can't move on our own, you've got the engine. So we're just gonna draw some simple lines connecting our cars. And you can see I'm leaving a little bit of space because I don't want to put my marker in my still wet paint. So if you wanted to, you could wait until this was dry and totally connect it. But actually I noticed that Mr. Cruz, when he did his art, he left a little bit of space in there. Like there's a little space in between these lines. And I think that's just something that makes it kind of cool looking. We get the idea of them being connected. That is our art project. Does it look like Donald Cruz's work? Or maybe like our train that we have up here? Or maybe like a train that you might have seen before? This is a pretty cool art project and it's pretty simple to do using materials that are, are pretty easy to uh, find. If you don't already have the paint, you can usually find this kind of paint in a set um, for pretty cheap at places like dollar stores. There's even stuff online you can learn how to make your own paint um, because you can make it with things like flour and water and a little bit of food coloring. So this is a project that you can do pretty easily, even if you don't have all of these exact same things at home. One more extension, one more thing that you could add onto this. If you remember from our story, the train wasn't just driving flat along tracks, right? We had our train going really quickly. We had our train going through a tunnel. Our train went through a city. Our train went over a trestle. So you can use markers if you want to add in a landscape or like a setting for your train, kind of a background for your train. You can decide whether your train is driving through the city. You could decide if it's driving through a farm area or over a really tall bridge, or you can decide maybe your train is driving right past your home or right past Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for joining us for our sponge painted train activity. Thank you for watching this week through our entire Art of Reading Wonder Week sponsored by Union Pacific. If you have any comments for us, if you really liked this activity, if you're excited to try it on your own or to add in a setting, go ahead and tell us in the comments. You can even try taking a picture if you did do the art along with us. See if you can get a picture of your art and post that in the comments. I would love to see some other trains as well. Um, or you can just tell us like, oh, I'm excited to do this, or I have ridden on a train before. Or if you just thought this was kind of cool, you can just be like, thumbs up Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center. I liked your train. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we will see you all again soon. From Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center, I'm Danny. See y'all next time. Bye.